Hello, my name is Matsu. I'm head chef of the Node 70. Today, I'm gonna show you the every tool I use for Sari course my omakase. Omakase meaning it's the chef's choice. There is no menu, so people sit down, they don't know what's coming. So I'm gonna show you the knife I use for the service. Japanese knife is very specific. Just one purpose to cut the ingredients. This is the deba. This one used for the break down the fish, scaling out. As you see the single bevel. A single bevel means one side is flat, the other side is much sharper than like a boss bevel. This is strong to sometimes chop off the heads of the fish and break down the fish like that. This shape made by me because I'm sharpening every day. Everybody different shape. So this is my shape. This is the same knife. This used to be a same size. Next knife is the unagi bocho. It's called edo saki. So this tip opens the eel. This has a double bevel. The anago, uh, it's a very traditional sushi. It's a fresh water eel, it's in season. Then I use this knife to open the eel. Next knife is the usuba. This uh, knife is uh, special for cutting the vegetable. You cannot cut in the hard thing. Only vegetable, like a thin slice. It's called Kanto style. It's this shape, it's square. It's a Tokyo style knife. This is called Mukimono. This is only vegetable too. Compared to this one, it's a very pointy. So I can uh, use for the, some fine work. Small technique, like a little vegetable, I use two different kinds. This is actually the, my name. I'm Matsu, then my family name is Matsuzaki. This is actually my gift from the, my wife. Next knife is Kengata Yanagi. This is only for slicing the fish. First of all, thinner and more longer. Doesn't damage or anything to the fish. Then when you eat it, you can taste differently. Let's say uh, you have a very dull knife to slice the sashimi, you can feel like a very different day. This is the uh, uh, Japanese steel, and this is called Aoko. It's a Japanese blue steel. Another knife used to be this size. This is the service knife before. So I used to using this knife, but uh, now it's retired. Long time ago, the, my old boss gave it to me, then I using every day. It's Kind of this uh, like a tool, it's, if you take care, you can, can be used for a lifetime. And this is for my history and my treasure. Next tool is the, called Kanaoroshi. These are a few different sizes. Sometimes I grade it like a radish, like a vegetable. This is a machine made. And this is the uh, handmade. made. A little bit of hammering working on the steel. Compared to this one, this is very line up straight, but this is very random. Personally, I like the tool uh, made by the hand. When you're using, you feel the, such a craft, craftsmanship. Sometimes I use the use zest, then, and zest on the food. Like a sashimi, like a, I serve the stewed octopus, I put on the use zest on the top of the, made up by the, like a bamboo. Next one, it's a very similar. But uh, this is uh, specifically made for wasabi. This is the very traditional style called samehada. It's a same meaning it's a shark. This grated part is made by the shark skin. This surface makes finer, smooth grading on the wasabi. This is the two kind of cutting board made by the ginkgo nuts. The hinoki, cypress, is a very common for using the cutting board in Japanese cuisine, made by the Miyadaiku, it's a carpenter. Also, or ginkgo nuts. Ginkgo nuts cutting board, it's a softer. Generally, people use many kinds of cutting board, such as plastic, very easy to get the knife with two. So that's why we kind of use for the, this special cutting board for the service. Once in uh, six months, and we call the carpenter, shape the uh, like a surface to make a, a board straight then clean surface. Nowadays, people wasting stuff, you know, oh, this is dirty, throw it away and buy new one. But the, these are uh, some kind of quality tool that if you maintenance well, it can be a lifetime. I'm really like to be uh, that kind of style. 
use the one tool, you know, getting all together. So we are like a growing together, you know. The next tool I show you the kind of boxes. This is the Koru Netabako. Ice goes inside, so I put the another piece of wood, then have a paper, then and keep the uh, like a fish. This is a very traditional way to keep the like a, a fish or sub to the counter because these have a no electronic, just the ice on the bottom. The the temperature doesn't go cold as refrigerator. Our food is very important for the temperature of the food. So I don't want to serve very cold, cold fish to the customer. There is no fun or anything, so fish doesn't get dry. This is the called Hida Shunke. When I presented the ingredients to the customer, I use uh, this kind of box. I have to show everything I do, then people can understand my food. This is a sea urchin from Hokkaido. So this box is just made for the sea urchin. It's very beautiful showing to these like a piece of handmade tool. Our style of the um, food is not 17. It's a very ingredient focus. Sometimes I just serve customer directly as it is, so they can feel just the ingredients. Next, uh, I show you the ceramic. This is the ceramic I use every day. This is uh, called matcha one. It's uh, usually made by the uh, people making the green tea. I serve the sushi by the bare hand. So when I take the rice, I need to touch the little bit of water and vinegar to coating my hand. Then rice doesn't stick. And this is for like a soy sauce. And this is a brush. So every piece I make in front of the customer, we use a homemade soy sauce to touch up, then I make a sushi, then brush to the last, and serve to the customer. I don't like to serve the soy sauce to customer. Everything I prepare for them, they just eat. Just the right amount to feel the best condition of the food. This is a called Mishima style. Very traditional way to like kind of stamp, make a pattern. And these two Mishima, I use for, you know, wasabi, and this is sometimes marinated with tuna. This is also called Mishima, very similar style. This one from Edo period. And this is the very vintage. It's uh, like almost like 300 years old. This is one of the, my favorite. My best friend father is this ceramic craftsman. This is the first ceramic I own by myself to buy and directly talk to like my friend father on the like a, a phone then he picked for me and send it to me then he passed away a while ago so this is very important so this is my treasure very important to know the who made it how they made it to i understand the some quality and like a craftsmanship that's the so joy so i'm so happy to work here this is called handai. Very important tool for making the rice. I'm mixing the rice with the rice vinegar for the sushi. If you're doing too much, it's a kind of rice is broken, gets mushy. Just the mixing rice is uh, very complicated. Sushi, it's the, lots of people don't know, think it's uh, fish is important, but the most important ingredient is a rice. If rice is bad, Everything is bad. For my personal preference, when I cut the shari, I like to very thinner to this side. It's exactly like a fit of my hand. So I couldn't find the right size for it. So I bought a big spatula, then I cut them myself. So this is a very special uh, Miyajima for me. And this is the ohitsu. When I print the rice inside of the boxes, they suck the moisture from the rice so it doesn't get mushy. It's a keep best condition of the rice. Next tool is called suribachi and surikogi. It's a mixing bowl. This actually has the surface of the like a dent that good for the mixing thing. This also helps uh, grade it ingredients. This is a small version. This is uh, like a uh, sesame seeds, more like aroma comes up. 
That's how I use for the dish too. This is called a uh, geta. It's a very uh, traditional uh, like a uh, udon, like a uh, coal made by the kiri. It, the very soft wood. Counter is uh, like a little high for me. So when I cutting something, I'm very short guy. So I need to uh, like a uh, height a little bit. So that's why I wear kind of geta. And this is the uh, gift from the chef nose. It's not really comfortable, but uh, um, for me, it gets get used to it. When I start to service, I use the apron this way, then feel like, yes, I'm going to start to work. That kind of helps me to change my mind. Next tool is the called bonzaru. It's a Japanese uh, traditional kind of strainer made by the bamboo. Bamboo is a very strong for the uh, like a water. Sometimes we use the like a wet the bonzaru, put the salt on the top of it, then line up the, all the fish, then cure. Uh, I cure the fish by the salt. So that kind of drain like a drain. I don't want to touch the fish with water while I'm curing the salt. So that's why this strainer is uh, very important. The regular bonzaru I use for the preparation. And this is the same bonzaru, but the very special one called dento koge. It's a Japanese such a craftsmanship. When I cook something to the customer, I show to my ingredients. The kind of special like a display, I use the special bonzaru. This is a makisu. This is also made by bamboo. When I make uh, sometimes uh, like a roll with seaweed to make a shape of the roll. Traditionally, it's uh, I make a futomaki and kampyo roll, which is a Japanese squash. I boil the vegetable. I, I can wrap it around and squeeze to the vegetable. That kind of many purpose. This is shaker. I use for the sesame seed. Take it out, then it's sesame comes out. Made by the bamboo. This count, uh, I don't want to show to like a steel shaker. This is much our like a style. And to use this kind of uh, tool, more, can I say more elegant? To use this kind of tool. Then also this one made by the handmade craftsmanship. I wanna show you to the my kitchen. Please follow me. All the prepping, like uh, grilling the fish, like uh, simmering the kind of fish, and uh, everything happening here. Next to it is the Japanese traditional pen. These are made by the aluminum. So it's cook faster. When I usually using uh, this pen, I use uh, some kind of plier. This is uh, called yattoko. So we use something no handle. Then when I cook something multiple or places, doesn't burn the handle. To something pouring something, simmering something, then we use uh, this kind of uh, tool. This is the one each pattern made by the hammer. Hammering the pan, it makes the pan stronger and also this dents for heating ingredients very quickly. I heat up like a, you know, miso soup. Some of the, I'm boiling the vegetable and also, or like a simmering the, like a octopus. All kind of Japanese cuisine use the, this kind of tool. This is the called yukihira nabe. Sometimes good to have a handle. Then this is made by the udon. So if it's burnt and uh, like uh, broken, it's uh, replaceable. This is actually my personal uh, pan and bring from my house. Each tool that my favorite, I pick by myself. Before this opened the restaurant, I went back to Japan for like uh, five days. I go there specifically, I pick by myself to use for the, my kitchen. Copper pan. Copper is a heating, it's faster than aluminum and stainless. We use for cooking the egg. Western omelet is a very different way, but the Japanese omelet is uh, this shape and thin layer to flip the so many times to have the layer. The biggest one is uh, like uh, this size. Next to it's the steamer. We actually put the water inside and 
put on the higher, then the steamer the inside has the hole on it. So all the hotness coming from the hole. I use this steamer for like a chawanmushi, like a egg custard, and also steaming the fish. When I want to grilling and skin crispy, I use a grill. And when I want these ingredients to be maybe softer, different texture, I use the steamer. This is a called hagama. The most important ingredient is rice. So how we cook rice is a very important. Back in the time, it's a, let's say Edo period, long, long time, people used to use this to cooking the rice at home. And the time there is no gas, so putting the wooden stove to put on the top of it. This sometime all the technique cannot replace by the technology. That's why we using for this way. This wooden has uh, get the moisture too. This has uh, like a round. So when it's cooking the rice inside, it's water is uh, like circulating. It's very important for the cooking the rice. To put on the set of here, fire, set on the middle. Then we put the rice and water. Then on the way, because of let the moisture out, it gets harder rice. Then after the harder rice, I pour the vinegar, then rice drink the vinegar. So that's how I mix the sushi rice. This is the pan, people usually using by this. Before I put in the warmer, I cool down the uh, rice like, like this. And also sometimes we use Japanese charcoal and to making the fire. Next to it is the chopsticks. This is the chopsticks for plating the food. Compared to other chopsticks, fit your hand very like naturally, light, and very detailed work to uh, something put on the top of the plating. Chopsticks, almost you can do anything. You can stab something, and you can cut something, and if you flip it, there is a kind of a special shape on the then you can scoop something made by the bamboo. This is also a gift from the chef notes, from the uptown. These are my favorite. And next one is the made by the steel. I usually prefer to use this for in the kitchen. When I deep frying something, I can use for this one. And also or simmering something, I can pork on the something. It's very useful too. Those chopsticks are just uh, regular. I wanna pick something, multiple. Oh, and this is uh, I bought for omelette to turn the uh, egg. It's very easy to use. So each chopstick is a uh, different purpose I use. Next to it is the uroko kaki. It's a uroko means a fish scale. This is made by stainless. When I using the scale the fish. Each fish is scale is uh, very, sometimes it's so hard, sometimes it's very soft. So kind of heavy duty, it, I use uh, this uh, big scaler. This is uh, more like a traditional type of the scaler made by the brass. Compared to stainless, this is much softer. Even just a scaler, uh, Japanese make for the using for the long time. And this is actually a, a arrived today. So, this is a kin medai. It's a golden eye snapper. As you can see, the fish comes whole fish. So we don't buy filet or anything. All the process we preparation here it's a, a from scratch, like a one to ten. So I use the scaler. These small spoon, I can scoop something. Then I check the flavor. Uh, let's say making the dashi, making the sauce. We use the, like a small detail. There is a little like a mark on this. This it's hammering each time. Shape is elegant and I like to use this kind of the spoon. People buy cheap stuff, throwing away, and then wasting the stuff. Once you have these kind of thing, you can almost use forever. I also have a emotion for that, you know. My knife, my spoon, my chopsticks, all the my part of me I have a emotion for the, this kind of tool. For in this restaurant, I have uh, more hundred of tools 
each one is different, but each of the tool is a very important for me to use for cook my cuisine. Training.